Hey, and welcome to the video. Today is the first video in a series of six that are based on a backup app that we created for our customers. We're not going to rebuild the backup app, but I'm going to share with you some lessons learned or some tips and tricks. And the first one is how to build a screen within a screen. What, what I mean by that is, and if you see the app, you'll, you'll know what I mean. We have the main screens moving left and right between something that looks like a header and a footer. And that looks uh, quite professional according to our clients. So I wanted to uh, show you how to do that. The second thing we'll be looking at is a scroll view that allows you to look at a large piece of text. For example, we have our instructions on how to use the app that's quite long. And then we use a scroll view so that the text kind of moves behind the screen if you like, so you can scroll through it. The third thing to look at is to use templates. That will mean you don't have to code as much. Um, or you don't have to copy code, you can just reuse templates. For that, we will have to learn how to pass variables between Python and Kivi. So that's going to be really interesting. Then a short session on um, an if statement and how to use an if statement in your KV file. The fifth uh, video is about changing the size of the text in your label automatically when the size of your label changes. So there's a bit of code for that, that is, you can't, that's not just a standard option. And then finally, we'll convert our Python app into a Windows executable. And that will be exciting because that is quite, uh, quite an undertaking with PyInstaller. So that's what I've got in store for you. Let's move to the first step, building that screen within the screen. Okay, so let me give you a quick introduction to this um, backup app that we've built. Um, this is an app that we give to our customers for free. Um, our customers tend to be smaller companies who often forget to make backups, so we've built them this little tool. So it uh, shows you when the latest backup was made. If you click take backup, you can then um, see the folders you backed up last time. Um, you can use that current selection to, to make a backup. It will then check um, based on the date last modified, which files need to be updated. And if there are new files, of course, it will back them up as well. Or you can select new folders. Um, I am in Linux, so if you are in Windows, you will not recognize this structure. If you're in Windows, actually, you get the option to select from your C drive or D drive or F drive, whichever drives are connected to your laptop or your PC. Um, so you can um, click a folder confirm the selection where do you then back up to uh, to media for example I confirm that selection I can then see okay I want to um, update or back up the downloads folder to the media drive if I click that it will start doing that which of course I will not do um, it will then create a backup log which will show you the latest um, and then whether you it will show you backup complete when everything went fine um, you can clear the backup log if you want. I'm not going to do that for now. Um, and then there's also a help section that explains how to use the app. So that's all relatively straightforward. So that's our backup app. And in building this app, there were a few lessons learned and I will take you through the first one right now. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit because um, I want to show you what I would like to focus on in this video and that is the screen within the screen. What do I mean by that? Well, we have um, our main screen here with the buttons that seem to sit within something that looks like a header and then below a footer. Because if I click any of the buttons and we go to the following screen, this doesn't change. So all the screens move within this structure that has a header and a footer. So that's what we'll be focusing on right now. Okay, let's dive straight in. So of course, we're not going to completely rebuild the backup app. The video today is just about the screen moving within the screen. So the header and the footer information. So I've just built a little app that does the same thing. It just doesn't look as nice. So you have your header information here, the footer, and then you've got your first screen with a first row and some more text and then a button. If you go to the second screen, you can see that the screen nicely slides to the second screen. Um, this is the first row of the second screen, some more text, and you have another button to go back to the welcome screen. So this is the little app we'll be building. So in order for you to not have to watch me type an awful lot, I've already built the basic structure of the app in Python 
and here you have the Kiwi file. Okay, so I import app, builder, and I also import a screen. I use the builder to connect to my uh, Kiwi file. If you are not familiar with the different ways this can be done, please check out my channel. Um, I have a video on the three different ways in which you can connect your Python file to your Kiwi file. So my version of Kiwi is 2.1.0. I create a class for a welcome screen, which inherits from screen and a second screen, which also inherits from screen. And then I have my app, which it's build function. I give it a title and then I return using builder the load file functionality and that connects me to my GUI.kv file, which is this one over here. And then this is where I instantiate my application and yeah, call its run method. Okay, so that's the basic setup in Python and Kivi. We have the welcome screen and a second screen. They look very, very similar, uh, of course, as you remember from the app. It's just a little box layout with two labels and a button. Same for the second screen, a box layout with two labels and a button. My root is going to be a box layout, this one here. Um, orientation is vertical, and within that, I'm going to have my header, my main screen, and my footer. Now, the header, I stick in a separate grid layout because you might remember there was a label and then a logo, and I want to show them next to each other, so I have two columns. The first element is a label, which has header information, and the image, which shows the logo. Then, I want the main screen. Now, the main screen, I will stick in a box layout, and I will give it a different background color so it's easier to see, and you might remember that was light gray. Um, so this box layout has, I used a canvas before um, to well define the color first, which is gray, and then draw the rectangle. Now if you don't do if you don't draw the rectangle, nothing's going to change. So if you leave this out, don't think that you're gonna get a, a gray background because you just define the color here. You have to draw the rectangle. Okay, so then in here, I'm going to want to have my screens move left and right, and then the footer is here. And so within the structure of the box layout, the root object, the, um, the header, which is within this grid layout, takes up 20% of the height and the label um, 10%. So my box layout, which contains my screens, will take up the remainder. So how do I get my screens in here? Well, that, that you do that through a um, screen manager. So get the screen manager in here because you need multiple screens or we have multiple screens in our app. I'm going to give my screen manager an ID and um, that will be handy later when I need to refer to it. Not scale max, just SM. Okay, um, I'm going to create my welcome screen in the screen manager. I'm gonna give that a name. Uh, welcome screen and then I'm also going to create a second screen which also has a name you guessed it second screen okay there you go that's my screen manager now the screen manager sits within this box layout and this box layout sits within the header and the footer and that is how you get your screens to move between a header and a footer all right so um let's see what that gives us how far do we get okay that looks familiar you've got your header information and the logo the first row of the welcome screen the second row of the welcome screen and then the button to go to the second screen and then of course nothing happens because we haven't implemented any functionality yet for the buttons and that's what we're going to do now and I'll show you two different ways of doing that okay let's go to the uh, the first button so on the welcome screen I'm going to need uh, something here now the as I said there's two ways that I can think of, of moving between screens. There's, it kind of depends what your preference is. There is a view that if you really want to split functionality from the way things look, and the way things look is in your Kivi file, and functionality is in Python, then you should switch screens in Python. Um, 
you can do that. There's another view that says, well, switching screens is not really functionality. It is just part of the way things look. So either way, I'm going to show you both ways and then you can make up your own mind. For the welcome screen, I'm going to use the Python way. And um, for the other screen, to switch back to the welcome screen from the second screen, I'm going to use the Kiwi way or the Kiwi language approach, if you like. So um, first, we're going to have to define the init function of this class. And it is good practice to take the quags because that's what the Kiwi um, documentation suggests because some of the methods actually have keywords that you wouldn't necessarily know about so then I'm inheriting from screen so I'm going to use the or call the init function using the super function and then don't forget to also pull through the uh, quags okay so that was easy enough now I'm going to define a function um, I'm going to call it click button okay now how am I going to get to the second screen well I need to therefore get to the screen manager how do I get to the screen manager from within the welcome screen class well where does my screen manager live well my screen manager lives if you look look here, it sits, it's here, okay? Um, I can refer to it using this ID called SM, and once I'm in the screen manager, I can refer to the welcome screen and the second screen. Now, this screen manager sits in the, this box layout, and that sits in this box layout, and so the root of the whole app is a box layout. Now, the way it works is you can call the app, you can then tell the app to go to its root, and then you can ask the root to look at all the IDs it has. In our case, there's only one because I haven't given any IDs to labels or anything like that. And then with that ID, you can identify the screen manager. And once you're in the screen manager, you can then trigger the next screen. So that's what we're going to do. And the way to do that in Python is you call the app and then there is a method called get running app that will that will give you in app it will store the current app now from the app I want to get to the screen manager so the screen manager how did I get to that I get my app right then I know for in my app there was the root so that takes me to the box layout and in the box layout there were IDs and one of the IDs or the ID that I am looking for was called SM that is my screen manager. So I went from app, which is a running app, to the root, which is the box layout. I asked for all the IDs of the box layout and then picked out the SM one because that defines my screen manager. So my screen manager is defined through this line of code. So what can I do then? Well, once I'm in the screen manager, I can say, well, my current screen, I want that to be something different. I want that to be the second screen. And that should then uh, allow us to go to the second screen. Now, of course, the other thing we need to do is we need to link the button in the welcome screen to this particular um, function. So let's go through the welcome screen. Now, the welcome screen, a lot of people use on press. It's actually better to use on release. It seems to be less buggy, at least in my case. Now, what do I need to use? Do I need to use, somehow I need to refer to this function here, which sits in welcome screen. So do I use app? Do I use self? Do I use root? Well, self, if I use self in this particular position, self actually refers to the button. The button doesn't have this function. The function sits in the welcome screen class. So self is not gonna work. But of course, this button sits within the welcome screen so for this button that is the root and once i'm in the root or i call the root i can then call this click button function so click button and don't forget to um, call the function instead of just naming it right so that should allow me to move from the welcome screen 
to the second screen. So let's have a look. There you go. So that moved me to the second screen now. I can't move back yet because I haven't put any functionality behind this button. So that's the next uh, step. Now I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to just do it purely in Kivi. So the logic is exactly the same. It's just that because we are um, now in Kivi language, it is, it is slightly different. But again, I'm going to start with unrelease. Okay, what do I need to do? Well, I need to find the app. Now, the app is a known uh, known um, object to uh, the Kivi language, if you like. From the app, I'll take the root. Remember, that took me to the box layout. We know that the root then has IDs. And from these IDs, which one do I need? Well, I need SM. I know that's the name of the ID that I need because that's this name here. That refers to my screen manager. So that means I'm in the screen manager. And then it's the same thing, saying current. And that then equals, well, now, of course, I want to move to the welcome screen. So let's have a quick look and see how that works. So we're back here. We can go to the second screen. That works. That was using the Python way of doing it here. Now I'm in the welcome screen. I click the welcome screen button, which should trigger this line here. And there we go. We're back to our first screen. So there you go. I hope you find that useful. If you did, please feel free to leave a comment or like the video or even consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye.